it's all about making that connection with this amazing music community that we have in Champaign-Urbana and the cool stuff that's happening here at Parkland that a lot of people don't even realize is happening. This is Champagne is also a band podcast. One songwriter, one song. I'm Sven, your host for a journey into the music of Champagne Urbana. Recorded in the Blue Box studio with a songwriter from the Champagne Urbana music scene, past or present. Champagne is also a band podcast is proud to be a part of the Champagne Showers podcast network. Hello, listeners. Well, today I got the rare opportunity to speak with Dean Geiken and Adam Porter about the Perimeter Road Music Festival, which is happening in two weeks, April 30th, 2022. You'll get to hear some amazing bands and also get to hear the hard work and celebrate the hard work of what the faculty, the staff, and the students have put together for you, the listener to enjoy. So I can only say so much about how much I love this idea of the Perimeter Road Music Festival returning after two years, but I'd rather let Adam and Dean tell you about it. So without further ado, here's the interview. Welcome to Champagne is Also a Band podcast. Today I have Dean Geiken Mm -hmm. and Adam Porter, which you will remember Adam from episode 26. But today, I'm going to be talking with them about the Perimeter Road Music Festival, as well as the Perimeter Road Recording Studio, and that's the Perimeter Road Sound Recordings, right? That's correct. Dean, Mm -hmm. Adam, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Tell me a little bit about the Perimeter Road Festival for those that are just going to listen real quick, just so that they can get what it's all about and what they can expect. So the music festival, we call it the Perimeter Road Music Festival 2022. This is our second one, and it is going to be taking place on April the 30th in the B1 parking lot here at Parkland College, and it starts at noon. We have six local bands and one of our Perimeter Road signed artists that we recently produced an EP with, that's Annika Emily, and she'll be starting it off at noon, and then we have the rest of the bands coming in at the top of every hour thereafter until 6 o'clock. How did the Perimeter Road Music Festival start? I mean, I know that that, the first one was in 2019, in May. What made that a thing that had to happen? I'm going to let Adam answer that because this is kind of his brainchild. We started the label about seven years ago here at Parkland in 2015. Initially, the goal for the label was to give students real-world experience beyond the classroom, right? And so we had this great recording studio on campus. We had students interested in making music. And my thought was, well, let's make the best use of this space possible and do more than just classes and coursework. And so that was kind of the spark for creating the record label. And for a number of years when the label started, that's what we did. We signed artists and bands from the local music community. We'd spend two semesters with them, a semester recording and tracking their album and a semester mixing, mastering and releasing it. A few years into that, it became very apparent that every year I would have students who were interested in getting live music mixing experience which is something I was not providing to record label students. And I think it's important to note that that is usually one of the first entry level jobs that sound people can get. And so getting a little bit of experience under their belt can be helpful. The other aspect is students being interested in event planning and promotional efforts that go into things other than just releasing an album. So I saw a music festival as a perfect opportunity to kind of bring those two elements into the fold of what we were already doing with the label. So in 2019, we put our heads together for doing the first festival. We had a great team of students who worked on band booking, promotional elements, 
elements. And we wrapped up with a super successful festival at the end of that semester in 2019. We planned to do this every year because that first year went so great. COVID kind of put this on the back burner for a couple of years where we had to cancel in 2020 and 2021. And thankfully, we're back at it. We've got an amazing lineup of local talent and we'll be rocking out right here on Parkland College's campus this coming April 30th. Let's just back up a little bit. How long does this take to plan as an event? <laughs> like, where do, where do you start when you say like, okay, we want to do this six months out, we want to do this five months out? How do you gauge that? I mean, it just depends. Here at Parkland, we work on the kind of a semester-based timeline, right? And so everything kind of works in that fashion as far as how we're timing things and planning things out. So generally speaking, if we knew we were going to do a festival this semester, we definitely needed to start working on it last semester, which we did. We're always kind of thinking one step ahead, like what are we going to be needing to do next semester and what can we do this semester to prepare for that? So in a, you know, in a band situation, it would be making sure we have all the tracking done so we can go into next semester ready to mix. In this situation, it's things like brainstorming what bands we want to give offers to, checking off all sorts of boxes related to food trucks and porta potties and electricity and all of the things that a lot of people don't think about that goes into putting on an event like this. And then when we get into the semester of the event, I mean, we've been working on it every week. We meet with the students every single week, and it's not only those crossing the T dotting the I's of all of those little things that need to happen, but also all the stuff that the students are doing, like making radio promotional spots, designing posters, getting the word out around town, using social media to our advantage. And so it's a process, a multi-semester process that goes into putting something like this together. There's a lot of plates spinning <laughs> and just keeping them spinning until April 30th is kind of our goal. So far, all the plates are still spinning. Good. And none have fallen down. This is one thing that I, I admire greatly about Park and College in general is that there's always a very cross-departmental balancing act, mm -hmm. or, or should I say like cooperation, yeah, in collaboration. order to, to make it happen. You've got WPCD that also broadcasts 88.7 in the local area, and you have a recording studio that records some of these artists that are going to also show up in the Perimeter Road Festival. Then I believe, sorry, I'm just kind of pulling all these things out of my hat head, but you also try to engage the art department in terms of doing some design, and you do that as well for the Perimeter Road Sound Recording yes. Studio. Yes, so. um, just recently, just before this interview, we got an email from AMP, which is Applied Media Promotions, which is kind of like a marketing and public relations internship here on campus, and their student who is working with them right now sent us this fantastic poster for the music festival. Mm -hmm. So even though she is not involved with the planning, she's still involved and getting some experience doing, you know, that type of marketing and stuff like that. They're going to be making photo slides for the internal television system here, mm. flyers, a number of other things. And yeah, we do. We've got a lot of people who are not necessarily involved with Perimeter Road or the radio station doing work with us. Yeah, many of the cover art designs of previous albums we've released have actually been designed by graphic design students as part of class projects. Uh, right here on campus and it's really cool like it's kind of rare for an artist especially one doing their first album to be able to come in and pick from 15 different designs yeah. for their album cover that were created just for them you know that's yeah. really neat it's kind of overwhelming too in a sense i would think as an artist that, you know <laughs> i've got all these awesome images to pick from and right. i have to pick one <laughs> But that's just a great example of the collaboration that you're talking about that happens here at Parkland. That's something I love as well. Mm -hmm. I have the schedule in front of me, and I just thought I'd just mention the artists that are going to be performing. It looks like Annika Emily from episode 39 is performing at noon, mm -hmm. and Disaster Kid is performing at 1. Melvin Knight from episode 7 is at 2 p.m. Ashland is at 3 Mo Pesci at four, 
Modern Drugs, which actually comprises of both episode 35 and 58, is at 5, and Union Avenue is at 6 p.m. Are they each hour-long sets, or are they? is there a, a long period of changeover in between? Okay, we've allowed for basically a set change or stage change, if you want to call it that. Each one is going to be at least 30 minutes. But we've added a little bit of flexibility. If they go over, that's fine. But we are hoping to stick to a top of the hour start for each band. So we're yeah, we're looking at like thirty to forty minute sets, and then twenty minute turnover, and then the next band will start right at the next of the top at the mm-hmm. top of the hour. Yeah. So all of the students that are part of this program will be out helping and doing. The yes. process of the changeover, running the sound, maybe even taking tickets. Uh, well, no, it's free. it's free. It's free. <laughs> is there going to be some kind of training that's going to happen before <laughs> this? Like, or is it just? Uh, I'm just curious. Okay. Like, how do you how do you boot camp this? Well, okay, for the training, I'll let Adam talk with that. But we have told them that they must clear their calendar for April 30th, 8 a.m., and expect to be there until we are the only ones left on the parking lot. And they will be helping set up the stage, moving equipment, pulling cable, all that good stuff. But in terms of live sound, Adam has arranged with MMS Rentals Hmm. to bring in the soundboard about a week or two in advance. And I'll let him take over from there. A lot of it is kind of trial by fire, like learning (laughs) in the moment. There are certain things that we can't necessarily prep them for ahead of time because, for instance... We don't have a stage here for them to help put together and build. We don't have a bunch of bands with their gear sitting behind a stage and being able to test how quickly we can get all that up on the stage and switch over. So those are things that they're going to learn in real time, and it's just going to be a matter of, hey, you, grab that and get it over here. You know, I mean, we work together as a team. But like Dean said, at least understanding the mixing board a bit, how that's all going to work as far as mixing the live show. Uh, We do like to give them a little bit of a heads up on that. The main thing is they're using a console that's different than what we have in our studio. So the rental company that we go through, MMS, based here in Champaign, will be bringing the Midas console in before the festival, giving the students a tutorial on how it works. And it's actually a pretty cool console in that it's digital so you can connect it to an app and actually use an iPad to control the faders so you don't have to be over at the mixing board you could actually walk out into the audience with your iPad and be making adjustments there so they'll get a little bit of like you said boot camp on that aspect of it and the rest of it they're just going to kind of learn as they go. Well I, I remember my first live sound experience it's not going to be a Midas board it was probably maybe eight channels total mm-hmm. yeah where i was standing i couldn't hear the the incredible feedback that was happening all the way at the other end mm-hmm. so you can't learn to swim until you get in the water exactly. so absolutely um, i'm gonna step a little bit away from the festival and talk a little bit about the perimeter road sound recordings studio or record uh, i'm just perimeter like, road but, sound recordings yes yeah. it's our record label and recording studio When did that get started? Well, the idea started in 2004. We officially became a label in, I'm sorry, 2014. (laughs) It's like, well, we haven't existed for that long. (laughs) The label officially started in 2014 in our minds. It officially actually became a label with student members the next year in 2015. So yeah, seven years strong now. We released our first album in 2015, and we've been releasing albums, EPs, and singles every semester since then. So how do you find the artists to participate in in the recording process or to be recorded? Different, Different methods. We've done public calls for Mm -hmm. artists so we've used social media to let people know hey we're looking to sign and record a new band or act send us your demos type of thing Mm -hmm. that's worked great to find some local talent and people who are interested in getting an ep recorded Uh, but some other projects have come out of either people who we know maybe people who Record label members are seen out at open mic nights every week, which is, for instance, like how we hooked up with QQ. Karina uh, ended up doing an album with her, and that was through a direct connection with one of our record label members. And we've even recorded actual record label members as signed artists. So a perfect example of that would be Prevalence. 
Both Drake and Will were super active members in the label, but they were also signed artists and a band that we released a project for. So, And they were also students here at Parkland And they were students. A little bit of everything. It uh, you know, just depends on kind of what's happening at that time. If we've got somebody kind of lined up already or if we want to kind of go at it uh, with an open invitation type of approach. It kind of varies. Mm-hmm. Let's also talk about WPCD. You know, that uh, that has been around considerably longer. Yeah. <laughs> um, talk about kind of the interaction between the recording studio and WPCD. Okay, so for my part, I'm kind of like the guy behind Adam in terms of the record label. I'm not teaching anything or anything or instructing the students. I'm kind of like, as he said, the guy who kind of crosses the T and dots the I's in my Forte is more in event planning, so when the mm. music festival comes up, that's where I'm more active. But in terms of the relationship between the radio station and the record label, the students in the record label can come and use the radio station for promotional purposes. We allow them to come in and use the production room to do stuff like that. And then, and most especially, is we get the artists that we're working with, come in and do interviews with them, and then once that final album or song or ep is done get it on the air Mm. get it on the air and we stream you know both online and then we're terrestrial too you know your car radio so it's a lot of good exposure for those artists what was that first like recording session like did (laughs) did you have a class for it like it was based on a class or do you actually have this as kind of an extracurricular activity as the recording studio good question the record label is not necessarily based on a class or connected to a class so we have an introduction to music recording class and we have an advanced music recording class both of those happen in the recording studio and that's for students who want to learn how to become engineers how to produce and mix music that's what that class is all about we use professional recording gear pro tools etc the record label is a what we call a co-curricular group on campus So the idea of a co-curricular is that it's an extracurricular group that connects to what students are learning in the classroom. So the idea of the label is to give students who want more experience than just, say, doing a project for the recording class and getting a grade, but kind of taking it to the next level and maybe being an engineer on a real project that's going to be out there on Spotify and being able to use that on their resume. A lot of the members that we get come out of the recording classes, but it's not a requirement, meaning that we do get some label members who might come from the radio classes, who might come from the graphic design department, who might be interested in marketing or promotion. And all of those students can come together from across campus with a shared interest in getting real world experience in the music industry. And that's what the record label is all about. So the record label meets separately from the classes and is a different group of students. But like I said, there's a lot of crossover there between the production classes and the label. I am curious and and i know i'm circling back to the music festival but how many would you say departments are interacting in order to make this happen okay well obviously there's a fine and applied arts department many aspects of the communication program or communication department we've got public safety involved we've got the physical plant involved marketing department marketing department Again, like I said, AMP, we've got that program involved. Holy cow. Um, and then it just maybe a few more that I'm missing. But yeah. Yeah. And then we also invite student groups and clubs and organizations yes. to come to the event. Mm-hmm. So we don't know for sure how many of those are going to be there yet. Uh, that's not finalized, but that's even more kind of collaboration where you come and watch the festival and see the cool music and see what the record label's doing, but then you can also see some of the other cool clubs and groups that yeah. are uh, doing neat things on campus as well. Just for folks that may be, you know, just finishing the Illinois half marathon and, and the whole group, <laughs> if, if you're looking for a bite to eat and some great music, there's going to be some food trucks there. Yes. Burrito King, Piatto Cafe, and Chester's Barbecue. Yes. Once you get there, there's no reason to go anywhere else. It's can, uh, We have an incredibly diverse lineup. I mean, each of these artists is, in the festival, unique. 
yep. to themselves. You've got singer songwriter style. You've got R and B soul. You've got classic alternative. You've got hip hop rap. You've got I mean, rockabilly. Like, I mean, it's you know, uh, it's a really nice yeah. mixture of styles and genres. Numerous food options. So, like you said, yeah, show up at noon, and there's you know, it's mm-hmm. a it's a full day of of good times. And everything that has been decided or planned upon has been through the work of the students. This is, mm. I would say, about a 90% student-run project. Wow. Excellent. There's a few things that they can't do that only Adam, Adam and I can do, but for the most part, this will all be their hard work. Yep. Very cool. That was a big disappointment to have uh, to ride ride the excitement of 2019 and look forward to 2020 and then uh-huh. have that not be something that could happen. So Sorry, we kind of I- had to reinvent the wheel a little bit because we had those two years off because we also had to kind of rebuild the record label membership. But fortunately, thanks to Adam's personality, he got a bunch of really great students involved in it. And so we really did hit the ground running pretty hard at the beginning of last semester. Mm. So a lot of groundwork was done. You would think that things could happen a lot faster when you're planning this stuff. But even getting a, a commitment from a food truck can take uh-huh. a month. <laughs> yeah, right. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention about the recording studio, the, the festival? The purpose of the festival is to engage the community with what we're doing here at Parkland College because Parkland College offers a lot of really great stuff. I mean, if you're interested in music and you're seeing what the music festival is doing, that's because there are students taking the recording classes or they're taking the radio classes. And when I say radio classes, I really mean audio production. It's not just being on the radio. It's you know learning how to properly use a microphone and being a communicator and things like that. So hopefully people will come to the music festival and say, you know, this is the place to learn stuff. I will just piggyback off of that and agree that Our primary goal beyond giving the experiences to the students that we were looking to add to the label is, like Dean said, to connect with the awesome community here in Champaign-Urbana. That's why we wanted to do the festival on campus because Mm -hmm. it's all about, okay, we've got all these amazing artists who have built-in fan bases here in the community. They're going to be coming to campus, and you know, like Dean said, this is a student-produced event. The students are going to be mixing the show, and I think just trying to get people to come, and maybe they come just because they want to see uh, Melvin Knight or one of these artists that they really like, but when they're here, then they can be like, oh my gosh, wow, so like... Parkland College has a record label and all these students are doing this themselves and like, oh, they've got all this other stuff. And it's all about making that connection with this amazing music community that we have in Champaign-Urbana and the cool stuff that's happening here at Parkland that a lot of people don't even realize is happening. Like, you know, when I tell people about what we do, they're like, oh, there's a recording studio at Parkland. Oh, there's a record label at Parkland. And so it's hopefully a mutually beneficial thing where we can get the word out about the cool stuff happening at Parkland. And we can also give promotion and a spotlight for these amazing acts to, to come together and, and have a great show. Excellent. So uh, if, if people wanted to find out more about the Perimeter Road festival maybe ask some questions or place the contact uh where should they direct their their eyes <laughs> right now if you search for perimeter road music festival 2022 there is an event page on facebook and you can also look for the perimeter road sound recordings facebook page or you can even go to the wpcd 88.7 FM Facebook page and you'll find information there. We're always on it so we'll be able to respond whether through comments or messages and things like that. And if you're not on Facebook, you can always email as well. There's the Perimeter Road email, perimeterroad at gmail.com or you can email me directly at aporter at parkland.edu. So Dean wanted people to know that if they wanted to call WPCD and ask some questions, they could reach them at area code 217 373-3790. If email and Facebook and the website are not the place to go for you, give them a call. 
All of the contact information that was mentioned in the episode today will be in the show notes, so be sure to check out the show notes. Well, Dean and Adam, thank you so much for taking the time to interview with me and tell me all about Perimeter Road, the Perimeter Road Music Festival, and also WPCD and all the effort that Parkland College puts into the community. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much. And and I just want to add thank you, Sven, for all that you do for the local music community. Not only this podcast, which shines a light on so many amazing, talented people throughout the community, but Svenstock, a great also local music festival that happens every year and highlights some really awesome local acts. So uh, it's an honor to be on the podcast again, and just thanks for all that you do. Thank you for listening to Champagne is also a band podcast. This is Adam Porter. And I'm Dean Geiken reminding you to check out the Perimeter Road Music Festival on April 30th, 2022, because great great music music is out there. Go Go find find it where you live. Also a band. You almost have an NPR voice, it's so good. South <laughs> 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 on the inside. <laughs>